So, Mr. Guy Man. In our continuous discussion, which if I want to do a follow-up conversation with that sweat about, I would have to do in an interesting structure because the comments are quite long every time, keeps bringing up his Fallacy World videos. Why not turn that into content, right? Sorry if I'll be extremely blunt in certain parts. I fear it's necessary for a guy man to follow. This might sound like I'm just very mean, and I probably am, but it is substantiated. In our conversation, he keeps forgetting why we are talking about something. And in my previous Fantasy World debunk, he didn't understand that when I say we want evidence, we really want evidence. No, we don't care about how much money it would make you. We want evidence. Now, this video is about Occam's Razor. So let's start this video with a quick explanation of what Occam's Razor is. Other than hard to remember the spelling of. Seriously, I have to google it every time I want to write it. Occam's Razor states that the explanation that makes the least amount of assumption is probably the correct one. For instance, if you see a leaf under a tree, you can make, for instance, two hypotheses. One, the leaf fell from the tree. Two, the leaf was put there by a fairy. For explanation two, you need to assume that fairies exist. Therefore, it is the less likely explanation. It doesn't say that it is by definition false. It's a way to conclude what is the most likely explanation. Let's see how Mr. Guy Man misunderstands that. Oh, and by the way, yes, it's a lovely excuse against anything that comes down to God did it, or because God. Because then you have to start making extra assumptions that a God exists, or about a unique quality of God. So I can't say that I'm surprised that this Christian creationist literalist dislikes Occam's Razor. This week on Fallacy World, we're refuting Occam's Razor. Oh. Oh, wow. You probably don't understand why I am baffled. Look at the bottom middle. He isn't recording his voice, editing his voice, then loading it into an editing software and then building the video around it. He's doing it in one go with slight transitions at the same time as he's talking. I also did this once on my 31st video, four months after my first video, and the first video that would have had a big help from proper editing. This is his supposed season two. He has been making videos for two years. Seriously, start using some editing software. It, it will improve your videos by so much. Really does explain a lot about the problems in the video aspect of your videos. Not the thinking aspect though, there's no excuse for your problems with that. Which states that the more likely explanation is the correct one. Um, no. The more likely explanation is the correct one. Occam's razor doesn't deal with correctness. It deals with how you get to the more likely explanation. Great, he understands Occam's razor even worse than he understood the no Nobel Prize for disproving evolution retort. And we're 11 seconds in. Jolly. At least no terrible music overpowering his voice this time around. But how would this work in court? What if in the O.J. Simpson trial, O.J.'s lawyer said, it's more likely that my client is innocent? Would that be enough to demonstrate his innocence? We would have to look at why that would be the more likely answer. If there was evidence, what would require less assumptions? If the suspect is found with a large knife fitting the profile of the stab wounds of the victim and the victim's blood on it, and no explanation of how that victim's blood got on it, the hypothesis that the suspect stabbed the victim has less assumptions than any other explanation. 
therefore it's more likely that the suspect stabbed the victim to death. If there is no evidence that the suspect had anything to do with the victim, and nothing like a bloody knife was found, it is more likely that the suspect didn't do it. Now this is where he goes into his stupid story that I would love to skip. But he makes some more claims in this one. Meaning that I should debunk those too. Sadly. Don't worry, I won't show it all. So I wrote you a story to show you what the world would be like if Occam's Razor actually worked. Uh, Occam's Razor is a problem-solving principle. It doesn't do anything. It's a way for humans to solve problems. Saying if Occam's razor actually worked is about as sensical as saying if prioritizing problems actually worked. It it doesn't do anything. It's it's not a thing. It's a it's a way of thinking. Oh. And I stabbed myself in the eye. Once upon a time, a salt guy broke into Stark Towers and began stealing blueprints for Iron Man suits. When security confronted him, he said, It's, it's more likely that you're dead. And their heads exploded. Why? Why is it more likely? Is it because he shot them? Because if that's the case, it wouldn't be more likely that they are dead, it would be that they are dead. If he didn't shoot them, then the reason would need to be some external force, which we would have to assume is there, which would make it less likely than that they are not dead, because for them not to be dead, no extra assumptions have to be made. Uh oh, that ain't right, said Jay-Z who was on a rooftop a mile away, and he pulled out a sniper and shot the salt guy. George Carter and Emma McBlash for my praise report to my office, said Tony Stark over the intercom. George and Emma arrived. A salt guy just breached our security using Occam's razor. The way it works is, if something isn't there, but you want it to be there, you say it's more likely that it's there, and it will appear! Still... no. Occam's Razor doesn't do shit with the real world. It helps us conclude what the most likely hypothesis is. It doesn't give a damn about what you want. It only looks at how many assumptions have to be made for any hypothesis. The salt guy in question is part of a gang called Desert Death, whose headquarters is located in the Stark... in, in the Star Destroyer above. You see, that's why you first record your audio. Especially if you don't even appear on screen. Hell, with some basic editing software, you could cut out the part where you fail to talk, and no one would even really hear it. Unless you recorded the background music at the same time as well. You... you probably did, didn't you? Thank your stupid god that the rest of this story can be skipped. The real skepticism means not believing things without a good reason. Something may be very likely, but let's focus on the facts. Is there any evidentiary reason to believe it? If not, don't. Wow. Unbelievable. We can agree on something. If there is no reason for you to believe something, you shouldn't believe it. Of course, we vary widely on what we think there is reason to believe for. I agree with science that the mountains of evidence prove that the theory of evolution holds up. He believed that the goat herder's guide to the universe proves an all-knowing, all-powerful, all-loving god exists who allows bad things to happen. But at least we can agree if there's no reason to believe something, you shouldn't. Occam's razor was made to dodge that burden of proof. And you failed again. Occam's Razor doesn't deal with what you should believe. It deals with what hypothesis is more likely. 
and hypothesis is something you want to. Test 4. Occam's razor helps you select which hypothesis is the most likely, and therefore the best to test for. Once you have positive test results, you have a reason to take it as truth. You don't take an hypothesis as truth. And because of that, Occam's razor doesn't deal with truth. In fact, all logical razors were made to dodge some burden of proof, which is why we must expel them from the skeptic's handbook. No. A logical razor does not dodge a burden of proof. It actually does quite the opposite. It ignores things that haven't met their burden of proof. Occam's razor. The less unproven shit you have to rely on, aka the less assumptions you have to make, the better. Hitchens razor. That which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence, aka unproven shit can be ignored, etc. Logical razors make us ignore shit that's unproven. But here's the funny part. I know why he says this. And with his worldview, it makes sense. You see, I talk like the burden of proof works like the actual burden of proof. That any positive claim has to be proven before it can be taken as true. Mr. Guy Man works on another made up definition. And he works under, and I quote, Nope, we need a reason to believe that I am wrong. That is rationality. Yep, instead of believing in the burden of proof, he believes in the burden of disproof. Instead of proving a statement is true, he wants proof that something isn't true. Unless it's something he arbitrarily labels as silly. Invisible, untouchable pink elephants? Arbitrarily labeled silly. All-knowing, all-powerful, all-loving wizard but with miracles instead of magic because while they are the same thing it's called miracles when it's a god who lives outside the universe? That just needs to be disproven by showing there is death without a cause. Not just without a reason that somebody's life mercilessly ended, but without a cause. But yeah, he also doesn't understand Occam's Razor. What a surprise! And he sent me another one, talking about the debate between Kent Hoven and Aaron Ra. You know, the one where Kenty kept talking about how elephant and pine trees aren't related despite their cells working in the exact same way, for which there is no reason if a god made them, but makes perfect sense on the revolution. Well, apparently he thinks that Aaron talking about real systems of classification is twisting definitions. So that will be another fun dumpster fight to rip to shreds. This has been Vnix, saying farewell. Mm -hmm.